Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to more 428 Shibuya Scramble. My name is Raven from the Sky. Let's do this. All right, so we pretty much got all the endings. Well, bad ending here. But to get past this, there's only one. There's one of these jumps. There's only one other jump, and I think it is this one. Kano is in the same time slot. There we go. This was the same old Shibuya that it always was, but one that he looked at now with new eyes. His cell phone rang. Tino's name appeared on the incoming call display. Tino quickly picked up. Detective Tino, what's going on? You need to get Hitomi Osawa to safety immediately. Alfred isn't trying to get at her blood. He wants her eliminated. What? Tatino wasn't making any sense. Alfred Palmer had already been arrested. The threat was over now. Hurry, Tatino barked. Yes, sir. Detective, Archie called out suddenly. He was standing with Tatomi and the others near the statue of Hachiko. Detective, that's not a real Alfred. He's a fake. A fake? Yeah, I just got a call from Stanley. Tatino didn't want to believe it. If this Alfred was just a decoy, that meant the real culprit was elsewhere, still on the loose. Aichi's voice rang with desperation. He said the real Alfred is planning to get rid of both Hitomi and the fake with some kind of bomb. To get rid of Hitomi? That lined up with what Tatino had just called to warn him about. It must be true then. Once again, Kano tensed. A bomb, but where? Get me to the Explosive Ordnance Division. A team made up of Tokyo Metro... Okay. Someone squawked. We've got an emergency here. It was Kuze practically screaming into a cell phone. We're at the scramble outside the station. Hurry. The director started running toward the precinct, still shouting as he wove his way through the crowd. Kano felt himself starting to panic. But Tommy and Palmer were the targets. The bomb had to be nearby. He stormed over to his captive. Okay, where's the bomb? He demanded. Where are you talk? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me. I already told you the password, Palmer said. What point would there be in keeping things from you now? He had a point. And if he'd known about the expense of the bomb, he'd keep it a secret so far. He'd kept it a secret so far. Getting him to reveal it now would not be easy. Kano decided to just have to go look for it himself. He took a deep breath and tried to think logically. If he were Alfred, what would he do? How could he ensure that he'd eliminate both Hitomi and the fake Alfred at the same time? Where would he plant a bomb in order to pull that off? On the fake, there was no other place to possibly plant it on Hitomi. That way he could be certain he'd at least eliminate her. No, can't be that. That's how you get the bad ending. And just from a different perspective, he goes over and search Hitomi, takes the cell phone out, sits it down, and the bomb still goes off. So that process of elimination, that eliminates B in a minivan. He was going to try the same ploy all over again. It's either A or C. I'm going to go with A. On the fake, there was no other place he could possibly have planted it. Kano began to pat Palmer down carefully. Aichi, he shouted. Check the case, hurry! He gestured to the attache case Palmer had been carrying. Don't move. Kano searched through his captor's jacket and pocket of his pants. But he came up with nothing. Perhaps Alfred had fitted the bomb to the man's watch or belt? Stop this. I'm not carrying a bomb. Shut your mouth. But Kano couldn't spot any suspicious, anything sus suspicious about the watch or the belt either. He clenched his jaw in frustration. D did Palmer really not have it after all? Detective. It was Aichi. He looked alarmed. Kano hurried over to him, dragging Palmer along. Oh, here we go. When he looked inside the attache case, Palmer's face went pale. Oh, what do you have here? No, it can't be. Alfred, why? His voice was hoarse with betrayal. 
Then he abruptly broke into a slithered, stilted laughter. Laughter. <laughs> Trusting someone really does make you blind. Such a simple childish ruse. And it went right under my nose. Palmer looked over at Kano. We need to get out of here immediately, he said. That right there is C4. A plastic explosive created for military use. The chief component is RDX. Trimethylene. Trimethylene trinitrinitramine, trimethyl which is combined with a plasticizer such as diacetyl dioxical sebicate. It is highly reliable and is used by many military forces around the world, most notably the U.S. Armed Forces. That right there, a high yield plastic explosive used by the military, and that is enough to blow this whole area to smithereens. A chill ran up Kano's spine. Do not let this man go, he said, handling, handing Palmer over to Susumu. Got it. Just leave it to us. Susumu signaled to his followers to immediately dump, to immediately dump Palmer unceremoniously to the ground. Kano carefully inspected the inside of the attache case. I actually found a false bottom in the case. The space beneath it was indeed packed full of plastic explosives. Set within it was what looked like a detonator. Kano didn't know how much about, didn't know much about bomb disposal. He'd only been taught the very basics during his police academy training. Nonetheless, something drew his eye. The microphone. There was a parabolic microphone attached to the detonator. In all likelihood, the detonator had been set to go off in response to some sort of sound. Hey, detective, is that thing gonna explode or not? Iji's voice was shaking. It looks like it's sound activated, but it hasn't gone off just from having people talking nearby. That means it must be set to explode in response to a specific sound trigger. A specific sound, huh? I just took a moment to think. That's it. It must be Hitomi's ringtone. That's why Stanley had me power her cell phone off. So that means we're safe then, Hitomi asked. It's not going to explode anymore, right? Kano had to fight back feelings of relief. They couldn't forget that this was Alfred they were dealing with. Assuming they were safe would be a dangerous mistake. I know, she detonated manually. Shoot. Carefully lifting up the detonator, Kano spotted another cable connected to the bomb. Yep. Because remember, well, uh, during that ending, when, you when he searches her and powers her phone down, the, 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 the bomb still goes off. So, as calmly as he could, he tried to remove the plastic explosive from the attache case. He quickly discovered that the thinly stretched sheet of plastic explosive was only in an intermediate layer, concealing a second false bottom. A small timer had been set beneath it. It's not just a sound trigger. Kano's mouth had gone dry. His voice came out as a whisper. The bomb has also been fitted with a countdown timer. Stanley had been right on the mark. The ringtone of Hitomi's cell phone would trigger the explosion. That way, Alfred could eliminate both her and his stooge, Palmer, at the same time. But just in case the sound trigger were discovered, as a backup, the bomb had also been rigged to explode after a set time. Kano speed dialed his boss, Director Jose. Where's that bomb squad? 151, 150, not even two minutes left to go. It didn't look like the explosive ordnance unit would make it on time. Kano scanned the area weighing his options. He noticed Aichi standing right beside the bomb case. Aichi, he called out. Leave that thing and get out of there. Get out of here. But Aichi didn't move. No way. He sat down, attached the case, cradled in his arms. Aichi, what the heck are you doing? I'm not going anywhere until everyone's made it to safety. Detective, you need to get these people someplace safe right away. Clear the area first, then I'll go. But there's no way I can do that. Damn it, don't you want to save these people too? Kano bit his lower lip in frustration. Aichi was right. The bomb went off and missed a crowd like this. There was no telling how many casualties there'd be. He needed to do whatever he could as quickly as possible. Get back, everybody, get back! Aichi shouted at the top of his lungs. 
There's a bomb. Everyone, get out of here. Just run. Following his lead, Kano started directing nearby civilians to safety. Tommy Susumu and the others added their voices here. To his. There's a bomb. Everybody run. Get away as fast as you can. Please, you all have to get out of here. But the crowd wasn't listening to their warnings. On the contrary, some people hurried closer to see what the commotion was all about. Oh my God. It was no use. They were out of time. They don't have to save Aichi. Please. He turned back to him and called out. Aichi, that's enough. Leave the bomb and let's go. Aichi, Hitomi shouted. Come on. But Aichi only clutched the bomb more tightly. What are you doing? Kano screamed. Come with us, hurry. Still, Aichi would not move. Susumu's face went pale. Wait, Aichi, your leg. What about my leg? Earlier, you kicked that steel pipe. What the heck? Finally, Kano understood. It wasn't that Aichi didn't want to move. He couldn't move. So he decided to get all heroic. He used himself as a human shield to minimize the impact of the explosion on everybody else. That idiot, Kano muttered. If his leg was busted, why didn't he say so? How did he even make it this far? There couldn't be much time left. Kano rushed to help him now. He might not make it to safety before the bomb went off. He had to make a decision. Oh my god, here we go again. He couldn't just rush in without a plan. Kano ran for Aichi anyway. He couldn't just abandon him. Here we go again, guys. Do we have time to make a plan, though? He's being an idiot. He wanted to sacrifice himself for the greater good. But Kano wasn't going to let him do that. To have someone else be your shield, to have them up and give their life for yours, I actually had no idea just how hard that would be on the people he left behind. Even if it did save their lives. And until he was capable of comprehending that, Kano wasn't going to just let this kid die. He reached Aichi in a matter of moments and grabbed him by the shoulder hard. Let go of the case now. But Aichi reflectively hunched over, hunched lower. What the heck are you doing, man? Why'd you come back here? Just come with me. We have to get out of here. Look, you need to run. I can't move. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Kano squatted down and looked at Aichi right in the eye. Okay, you can't move on your own. So I'm going to help you move. Unless you want to kill me too, you better cooperate. Darn it. Don't be a fool, man. The strength ebbed from Aichi's hands. Wasting no time, Kano pulled the case away and slipped an arm around Aichi's side. Five seconds. His legs got entangled as Kano dragged Aichi to his feet. Come on, run. The detective shouted and they were upright at last. They needed to get as far away as possible in the few seconds they had left. Kano didn't know how big the explosion was going to be. Paul man said it would be enough to blow the whole area to smith of And then <laughs> there had been true terror in his voice when he said it. They just needed to keep moving. Keep running as far as their legs were taken. Aichi! Hitomi shrieked. Oh my god. Don't tell me. Bad ending again, huh? Yep. So stupid. Finally, flash of light. Then everything went dark. The force of the blast robbed Kano of his senses. He couldn't tell what had happened to Aichi. And in the, en in the end, Kano never even knew what cut his own life. Ah! We were doing good too, man. Where's the freaking bomb squad? All right, let's go back and make that decision. Couldn't rush. I rushed because I didn't think you sitting here make trying to uh, come up with a plan. We'll run the clock down all in itself. You couldn't just rush out a plan. The text needed to be both cool. Okay, there we go. From the dick dictum. Cool mind and a fiery spirit. The more heated the situation was, the more he needed to stay cool. You feel the muscles in the legs and his legs begin to stiffen. He did his best to slow his racing heartbeat and his mind so desperately for a way out of the situation. But his eyes remained fixed when Aichi holding that bomb in his arm. 
No matter can explode at any moment. Made it almost impossible to think. The harder he tried to calm himself, the more his panic grew. He cursed himself for not leaping into action immediately. He should have acted before thinking. That was the only thing he was good at. And still, he stood frozen, staring at Aichi. Then he felt his hairs rise up on the back of his neck. White smoke was coming from an approaching minivan. The vehicle teetered to a stop along the shoulder of the road. Still, the smoke spilled out, rolling from a party, partly open window. Keno could feel a strange chill in the air. Is that? Instinctively, he rushed toward it. Dry ice maker. Peering through the minivan's windows, he saw a clunky box-shaped device in the back. It was rumbling fiercely, spitting out an un unending amount of white clumps. Dry ice machine. Hey, Kano yelled, banging hard on the door. Open up. A freezing a bomb that used and using an electronic activation trigger it was possible to kill the battery cell and deactivate the detonator. The explosive ordnance unit used liquid nitrogen, but maybe dry ice could work as well. There were three men inside the vehicle. Kano shouted at the one in the driver's seat. I need to borrow that machine. Huh? <laughs> the man replied in a lethargic drawl. No way, man. You haven't even paid this thing off yet. There was no time to explain or negotiate. Kano was just going to have to take it by force. Hold it right there. Another man appeared suddenly in front of the vehicle. The pushy, the <laughs> pushy fellow Kano had ran into at the scene of the explosion. You guys are with that wandering angels theater troupe, yeah? He said to the van's occupants. He pointed at the dryer's machine. That thing's defective. The guy from the electronic store said he refund your deposit. Huh? For real? Hey, he told me to tell you that machine has been recalled. We'll bring it back for you, so hurry up and open the door. Huh? Yeah, okay. The newcomer helped the three men unload the dry ice machine from the minivan, and he turned to Kano. Here. Hurry up and take it, he shouted. Thanks. Kano wasn't sure what was going on, but he took the machine, ran, pushing it ahead, of him across the pavement. Aichi, he told me well tears in her eyes. The detective flew right past her, trailing a billowing plume of white smoke in his wake. Please let me make it in time. Please let me make it in time. Please let me make it in time. Kano let loose the wild yell. He ran as fast as his leg would take her toward Aichi and the bomb. Oh, we can't switch yet. To be continued! Yes! All right. So, only one's left is Aichi. Then Aichi turned in the Kano's direction. Detective, he shouted. Kano was looking towards him, seemingly already aware that something was amiss. Detective, that's not the real Alfred. He's fake. Okay, we already know this. Then his eyes happened to a light on the attached case the decoy had discarded. Could it be? No sooner had his suspicions been aroused. Of course, we know. We just we just saw this from a different perspective, so there's really no need for me to read over this. You guys already saw what happened. you just seen it from a new, persp new perspective. It has a false bottom. That's where the C4 is. And then under the, the, the C4, there's the timer. Oh, no, don't shake it. I'll flip it over. And don't smash it. Wow. 
Once more, he opened the case and looked inside, but still he saw nothing of note. He tossed the medical equipment aside and slowly tilted the case from side to side. Although it looked empty, there was a distinct sound of something metal sliding back and forth. Hold on, could it be? I just tugged up the case inner lining, quickly tearing it free. Yep. When he looked behind it, his eyes went wide. A thin layer of something that resembled white clay had been affixed inside the cover of the case. Several wires connected. This was it. The bomb really was inside the attache case. Here it is, he shouted to Kano. I found it. Kano hurried over, bringing his captive with him. There, Mr. Palmer, take a look. When he saw what was inside the attache case, the fake Alfred went pale. People are the lifeblood, Aichi reminded himself. The blood that coursed through the body that was the city. Like cells, it brought to life the city he so loved. And Aichi wanted to be one of the red oil. Oil was a white blood cells of Shibuya. Aichi, Kano called out, leave that thing and get out of here. No way. Aichi sat down cradling the case. Okay, we already saw this part. What the heck are you doing? He's going to be a hero because his leg is busted. Get as far as way as you can. No. No, I'm not leaving you. After the day they spent together, I actually knew full well that telling her told me something once wasn't enough to get her to listen. That stubbornness was one of the many things that made her so amazing in his eyes. Tell me, I actually clasped one of her hands tightly. Please, this is the one favor I will ever ask of you. His voice came out oddly soft and gentle. All right. But let me just say one thing first. There are still so many things I want to talk to you about. So much more that I want to know about you. So please, Aichi. Don't you die on me.
I want to know about you, so please. Hey, don't worry. Once everyone's made it to safety, I'll clear out of here right away. Tommy squeezed his hand, then got up and silently hurried away. Susumu, you and SOS start getting people out of the area. Yeah, all right. Susumu turned away and spurred the gang into motion. <laughs> then for an instant, Aichi's eyes met Kano's. Aichi gave a tiny nod and looked down at the timer. Get back! I just shot at the top of his lungs. Then the van pulls up. Powerful this bomb is, but please, God, let my body be enough to protect the people of Shibuya and to protect Atomi. I have to squeeze his eyes tightly shut. I'm sorry, Suzune. It's like I won't be able to keep visiting you in the hospital anymore. You'll forgive me, though, right? I stuck it through to the end, just like you told me to. I didn't call it quits partway through. And so, whatever you do, you can't let that disease beat you. Don't you dare let it beat you. We couldn't have more than a few seconds left to go. IG! It was Hitomi. He was glad to hear her voice one last thing. But he was glad that her voice was the last thing in this world he'd ever hear. Or so he'd see. <laughs> so he thought, IG, bring the bomb over here! Hmm? That wasn't Hitomi's voice. Aichi opened his eyes and saw Kano racing toward him. It was just a big weird piece of machinery. The detective flipped open the machine's cover to reveal a huge amount of dry ice. Stick it in here! Flash freezing the timer ought to stop it! Aichi did he was told, shoving the attachment case into dry ice. Kano helped him pile more dry ice on top of it. Let's hope that's enough, Kano exclaimed. He looked like a man desperate for a miracle. They could see the timer display through the gap in the frozen hydrogen, still counting down. Oh my god! Was this not going to work? I and Kano held their breath. To be continued! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the sky. If you enjoyed the episode, do me a favor and drop a like and subscribe to the channel and the series grow. Take care and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace.